everyone, welcome to week 50. We're continuing on with Thor this week, and we're going to cover the remaining two oscillator types, as well as cover things like oscillator sync and amplitude modulation. Then we're going to have a look at the oscillator mixer section, and also begin to take a look at the filters and the routings. The multi-oscillator is a very versatile oscillator and can simultaneously generate multiple detuned waveforms of a specific set type per voice. It's really great for producing complex timbres like thick basses and lead sounds, and can also generate a wide harmonic range of sounds like a cymbal or bell sounds. The following basic waveforms are available, sawtooth, square, soft sawtooth, soft square, and pulse. You can switch between waveforms using the button on the lower left hand corner, or by clicking directly on the waveform symbol. The amount parameter sets the amount of detune between the oscillators that will be applied. Turn it clockwise for more detune. Using low amount settings can produce subtle detune variations that make the sound shift and move endlessly, like an advanced chorus effect, whereas higher amount settings can produce some pretty wild detune timbres. The detune mode parameter sets the basic operational mode of the detuning. If the amount is set to zero, only the octave and fifth detune modes actually change the sound, as these modes start off with dual waveforms tuned one octave and a fifth apart, respectively. The fifth up and octave up down modes detune waveforms as the names imply, between zero to full amount settings. Linear will change the amount of detune according to where on the keyboard you play. In lower keyboard ranges, the amount of detune is stronger than in the higher keyboard ranges, and vice versa. The other modes, interval and random, basically add multiple waveforms and detune them in various ways that will produce different results. The noise oscillator can not only produce white and colored noise, but can also be used either as a pitched oscillator or as a modulation source. It has the following basic parameters. There is a single noise parameter knob apart from the standard tuning and keyboard track knobs. This is the noise modifier parameter that controls different parameters depending on the selected oscillator mode, and I'll cover them all in a second. The waveform selector button in the bottom left corner is used to set the oscillator mode. The following modes are available. Band. In this mode, the oscillator knob controls bandwidth. Turned fully clockwise, the oscillator produces pure noise. Turning the knob counterclockwise gradually narrows the bandwidth until a pitch is produced. The pitch will track the keyboard normally if the keyboard knob is set fully clockwise. SH stands for sample and hold, which is a type of random generator. The oscillator knob controls the rate of the sample and hold. With high oscillator knob settings, it produces a colored noise with a slightly phased sound quality. With lower rate settings, you could use the oscillator as a modulation source, like an LFO with random values. We will get into how you can do this when we cover the modulation matrix in one of the next videos. Static. As the name implies, this can generate the sound of static interference if you use low oscillator settings. The oscillator parameter controls density, or the amount of static. High density settings generate noise. Color. This produces a colored noise, which is basically noise where certain frequency areas are filtered.
for example, cutting or boosting certain frequency areas in the noise. The oscillator knob controls color. With a maximum color setting, you get white noise, and lower settings produce noise emphasizing lower frequencies. And the last mode, which is white, and produces pure white noise, where all the frequencies have equal energy. When using the white noise mode, turning this knob will have no effect, since there are no parameters associated. On the left-hand side of the oscillator section, you can see a few sliders and a couple of buttons that we have not covered yet. These are oscillator sync and amplitude modulation. Oscillator sync is when one oscillator will restart the period of another oscillator, so that they will have the same base frequency. If you change or modulate the frequency of the synced oscillator, you get the characteristic sound associated with oscillator sync. A synced oscillator that resets the other oscillators is called the master, and any synced oscillator that is reset by another is called the slave. In Thor, oscillator 1 is the master, so it controls the bass pitch of the oscillators, and oscillators 2 and 3 can both be slaves. You enable oscillator sync by clicking this switch here. The sync bandwidth sliders to the left of oscillator slots 2 and 3 allow you to adjust the sync bandwidth. This allows you to change the character of the oscillator sync. The parameter basically sets how abrupt the reset is. High bandwidth settings produce a more pronounced sync effect, and lower settings are more subtle. Amplitude modulation is often referred to as ring modulation. An amplitude modulation works by multiplying two signals together. In Thor, oscillator 2 amplitude modulates oscillator 1. The ring modulated output will then contain added frequencies, which are generated by the sum of and the difference between the two signals. Just like we learned in the subtractor, this can be used for creating complex and harmonic sounds. And you set the amount of amplitude modulation by raising the slider here. The mix section allows you to adjust the levels and the relative balance of the three oscillators. The two sliders control the output levels of oscillator 1 and 2 and oscillator 3, respectively. The balance knob sets the balance between oscillator 1 and 2 and can be modulated using an LFO or some other mod source. Note that the oscillators have to be connected to the filters via the numbered routing buttons here for the mix section settings to have any effect. Okay, on to the filter section. Thor has three open filter slots, two in the voice section, which act as per voice filters, and one in the global section, which is global for all the voices. Since Thor is what you might call a semi-modular synthesizer, meaning that some of the signal path has predetermined routings, the following rules will apply. Filters are pre-wired to the filter envelope, which we will cover in another video. Filters one and two can be used serially, meaning that the output of filter 1 goes, via the shaper, to the input of filter 2, or they can be used in parallel, meaning that one signal goes to filter 1 and another one can go to filter 2. As with the open oscillator slots, there are certain parameters which are common for all filter types. These are as follows. All the filter types have large knobs for both the filter frequency and filter resonance parameters, except for the formant filter which works a bit differently. The keyboard parameter sets how the filter frequency tracks incoming note pitch data. Some filter types, ladder, state variable, and comb, can self-oscillate and be used as extra oscillator sources. The envelope parameter sets how much the filter frequency responds to the filter envelope. 
The velocity parameter sets how much incoming note velocity affects the filter envelope amount. The invert button inverts how the filter frequency responds to envelope settings. The drive parameter allows you to adjust the input gain to the filter. By driving the filter harder, you can add some character and distortion to the sound. Any parameter settings, as well as any modulation assigned to those parameters, will be kept even if you change the filter type. On the pop-up menu, you can select between four different filter types and also a bypass mode. The available filter types are ladder low pass, state variable, comb, and formant. We're going to cover the filter types in more detail in next week's video, but in the meantime, if you want to experiment with them a little bit, remember that in order to pass the oscillator's signal output on in the signal chain, you first have to activate these three buttons that are right in front of each filter in order to route any of the audio from the oscillator to the filter input. Well, that's it for another week. Again, I'm James Bernard from Propellerhead Software, and I'll see you all next week with another video. Bye-bye.